Hey, everybody. How are you doing tonight? We've, uh, you know, what are we going to do? You know, two days after Comic Car Live, the best thing to do is get right back in the saddle and start interviewing again and having fun together, right? So uh, that's what we're going to do tonight. I've got Sean Watkins with me tonight. We're going to talk about uh, his, uh, his comic art collecting uh, experiences as well as his uh, time as an art rep, too. So we've got uh, a lot of things to talk about with Sean. So I'm not going to leave him in the green room at all. I'm going to bring him in and we're going to hang out. Hey, Sean. Hey, Bill. How are you? I, uh, I couldn't be better. Actually, I've, I've, I've had two days to uh, to work off all the anxiety of the weekend, and I'm I'm finally well rested and ready ready to go. I'm excited I, I, excited to be here. So uh, so so you know I, I'm not well. I, you know I know where I'm going to start with everything because you got to start always at the, back at the beginning of uh, yeah. of things. You know, in comics and uh, you know before we get to the art side of things. You know, how long have you been uh, you know interested in comics and original artwork? Well, comics goes way, way back. Um, I mean, from the time of going to the dentist and picking up comics, you know, reading comics at the at the dentist or getting them at uh, the grocery store. I'm a uh, an elderly millennial, I guess you would, you would put it. And I remember a time where you could get comics literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, my, my dad would pick them up for me, um, as well as I grew up kind of in the, the nineties era of all the X-Men cartoons and, and things like that. So like my introduction to comics was kind of between, you know, watching, uh, the, the Batman films, the, the cartoons and picking up random comics. I grew up in Northern New York. Um, and so we didn't have a comic shop, uh, until I was older and so I would just kind of pick up whatever was available. Like I never really read sequentially. It was just like I, I, I dreamed for the the books that were had just like one story encompassed in an issue. So I didn't have to like <laughs> guess what happened before or after. Right. Um, but uh, so I kind of grew up in that boom era of comics where uh, we were taught that our comic collection was going to be the thing that, you know, paid for our college. Uh, I'm still waiting for that spawn number one to 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 really help me out. But um, so I, I kind of dove in to, uh, you know, reading superheroes. I'm a big uh, I always wear my Green Lantern ring, big Green Lantern fan. Um, and I think like a lot of folks uh, got into it, was really into it, then kind of fell out of it for a bit, uh, came back to it a little bit later on. And around the same time, um, I was working at a, a place where a, one of my mentors uh, was really into collecting original art. So um, a different kind, a different era. Um, you know, he had spirit pages, um, uh, uh, pogo pages. You know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Really, when you said original art, I'm thinking, well, you know, it can't be comic art, but it was comic. Oh, it was art. comic art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so he would invite me into his office and instead of us doing work we would stare at heritage for two hours and he would talk to me about like well that's not actually eisner right like that was one of his his uh, assistants doing the, all of the page except for the 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 figure here and i got really kind of invested in learning about um collecting original art especially from someone who had a lot of knowledge and I got addicted to it. But unfortunately, it was also around the same time that I was about to have my first kid and uh, didn't have a ton of money. And so um, where would this be? Just out of curiosity. Uh, about 10, yeah. 10 years ago, nine, 10 yeah. years ago. Um, and so, you know, as a as a, a perpet I was a perpetual grad student. I had my first real job um, uh, out of getting a Ph.D., and I was starting to get into original art and I realized it was really expensive. It was a really expensive hobby. Um, and so I kind of started collecting pages from my youth, nostalgic buying like a lot of us, uh, a lot of us do. Um, I started with Green Lantern pages like Daryl Banks uh, Green Lantern, which is my, my favorite. Kyle, Kyle Rayner is my favorite. Um, and very quickly, I realized that, you know, some of the mainstream stuff was a little bit out of my my price range at that time. And um, I was also getting into more of the independent uh, comic scene. And I realized that it was much cheaper to to buy art directly from cartoonists who were creating their own work. Um, so long story short, 
um, I developed a lot of relationships with with those folks and, you know, learned a lot about um, working with different personalities uh, in, in the comics world and figuring out ways to either, you know, very nicely convince someone that they should sell me a page or, you know, spending a year of, of waiting for someone to respond to an email, that sort of thing. And uh, that's sort of the the collecting bit informed the the art rep thing, which I'm sure we can talk about um, at, at some point. But sure. um, my my journey kind of started with, you know, mainstream comics and then out of necessity, I think, um, and like a real like addiction to collecting this original art. Um, if I was going to do it, I needed to find a space that, you um, you know, it was a little bit more uh, e easy on my wallet with a with a young child. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. I have <laughs> so I, I've always had yeah. to wrestle with that, even when they weren't young. But do uh, you remember what your first original art pickup was? Yeah. Um, so it was uh, a Greg Tocini um, uh, Ion page, which is a, a Green Lantern series. Um, this is back when uh, eBay was still like kind of a place where you could get deals mm -hmm. and there was good art pretty regularly. And so I, I found a page, it was like a hundred dollars. And even, even at that point, which is funny, cause you know, we, we all have these like markers of like insanity within the co in collecting, right? When you, you're, you're like, <laughs> I will never cross this. And then you do, and then it's just over. But a hundred dollars was kind of like a big deal at that time, especially convincing my spouse that like, to her, this is all pieces of paper, and like, what, why, why would you spend any money on pieces of paper? Um, but I remember it, you know, talking to to Deborah and like, okay, you know, I'm going to make this purchase, this hundred dollar purchase of of this beautiful page that I remember from from a kid reading, mm -hmm. uh, reading this book. Ion was kind of uh, the the um, Kyle Rayner Green Lantern kind of got absorbed this power, and he became even even more powerful um, uh, and didn't need his ring anymore. It was kind of an interesting little little series. Um, but I still, um, I have that page up in the, the hallway. I, I pass by it every day to be reminded uh, of my, my addiction. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It's good that you still have it. And a lot of people don't have their first purchase. Uh, you know, and I think that uh, to still have it after after 10 plus years of doing this is uh, is pretty good. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I am one of those. Uh, may, I don't know if it's unique, but I I don't really sell any pages. It may be because I uh, and we'll talk about some of the, the 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 pages that I collect, the type of pages that I collect. Um, they they don't fall necessarily into superhero mainstream comics as much, um, and maybe I, I don't know. I, I I just I feel very attached to the pages that I buy, and a lot of a lot of them have stories about how I how I got them, right? I, I collect mostly directly from artists, which is mm -hmm. funny because I'm an art rep. Um, but I, I love building relationships with folks. And so I'll point at like the first commission I got was from Daryl Banks of Kyle Rayner. It's going to be a lot of Green Lantern talk tonight. And um, I had, it was just, I was so kind of nervous that I was bothering him, you know, like, I'm like, Oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to be, you know, that annoying person who's asked him to, to do the thousandth Kyle Rayner commission. Uh, but he was a, really a joy to work with. And we wrote back and forth a few times. And so I remember that as much as the page of art brings me joy, the, the sort of connection to, to the hobby collectors or, and, and cartoonists, um, brings me a lot of joy. So I, I it's kind of hard for me to sell things. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've kept most, most everything. That's not bad. I mean, and we, uh, there's a collector that we had on the show uh, last night. I didn't host it, but I, I watched it. You know, one of their, uh, tenants was they enjoy buying artwork direct from the artists too. You know, I think that that's a, that's a part of the hobby that uh, is special to it, right? You actually get to meet the creator who's been doing all this work that you, uh, you admire. And, uh, it's, it's just a, you know, it's the, it's one of the unique facets of collecting original art is actually, you know, having that relationship with the with the artists. And so buying direct is is a fun thing. I mean, that's why when we do the sales shows on here for me, it's just great getting to hang out with that artist yeah. for, you know, an hour and a half or two hours and just BS with them. And selling art is kind of the bonus right at the end of the day. It's that time you get to spend with them. That's really special. It's it's amazing to me, you know. I, I I don't know if I still have imposter syndrome as an art rep, but but kind of coming into the space uh, 
and 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 just being amazed at how welcoming mo most people are mm -hmm. um you know we we did a, a small press convention here in ann arbor uh, a few uh, months ago and i got to hang out with jaime hernandez which was like just a, a mind-blowing experience and he's just a guy you know um got to have dinner with him and it just it just feels like you're part of a bigger community and there's something really special to that and i uh, you know i don't know if it's unique to to this hobby but um you know i've never i've never felt like i wasn't welcomed you know what i mean people are just just really um kind and and you know if they see that you're trying to to help folks mm -hmm. they're they'll like open up their arms to you it's pretty amazing oh yeah no i agree well that's we talk about that a lot here right i mean as well yeah. that uh collectors helping collectors somebody mentioned that you uh what was that i thought it was uh dan mentioned posted a sam grindberg piece that sean helped me get uh earlier so uh, that's dan t mm -hmm. from calf um but uh but you know that, that that's Another aspect we talk about all the time, it's like the relationships you make with the other collectors usually end up helping you out in the long run. You know, they'll look out for you and, you know, one way or another, as far as like, if there's something out there art wise that might be up your alley, if it's not up their alley, they'll, they're, you know, they'll share that information. I mean, I think our hobby is it's, it's it, while it's, I would never call it cutthroat, but it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we do like our things and we like to be first to get things, but uh, I think at the end of the day, we do like to, uh, to share. I mean, comic card fans is all about that. Right. I mean, yeah. as a, as a platform, you know, we show off our collections first and foremost, because we like people to see what we own and we like to share our, what, you know, what our tastes are in the hobby because everybody's tastes are different. You know, I probably should have started our whole segment on saying that we're going to see a, a side of, uh, OA collecting that we're not used to seeing having you on here, Sean, but, but I didn't want to like, you know, have a, have a narrative for this before we got started. <laughs> But it's true. I mean, that's that's that is a big part of it. And not all collectors like to share, you know, and not all collectors are very, you know, like are, are probably outgoing and, and OK with, uh, you know, sharing information and those sorts of things. But the ones that do, I think, you know, form really great, uh, really, you, can, you know, partnerships, I, I think is the best way to put it with with other collectors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's to me one of the best things about this hobby. Yeah, and I think I think you all are doing amazing work um, with with kind of growing the community. One of the things I realized pretty early on as I, I started art, art repping was that there were a lot of folks like myself that kind of collected in isolation. You know, we may have had a, a, a calf account, but we you know either we're not active or we collect in a, a niche area. Um, and it, it was amazing to 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 kind of bring folks together. Um, that may, you know, like, like myself, I, my spouse doesn't care. My family doesn't care. I, I get so excited. I'm like, I booked Nate Powell. He, he, you know, he, he drew March. It's like a huge mm -hmm. deal. And, and my mom's like, good work, son. Um, that's, that's fine. Um, <laughs> how much money? Um, you know, so I think uh, it, it feels like even, even with how much this hobby has grown, there are still so many people that, that just kind of do it themselves. And, when you can kind of bring them in, encourage them to to join a community, even if they're not super active, you know, I get a lot of positive feedback from folks that are just, you know, re really happy to to be a part of something and have similar minded folks who can can be excited. You know, I, I knew that I this was a legitimate hobby when I would back in the day. I would just post a page that I bought on my personal social media, and no one would care. And I would think to myself, well, you know what? I'm doing this for the right reason. I'm not trying to show off because uh, nobody, nobody's interested. Mm. Um, and it is such a joy to post a page on CAF or, or, or in my in my Discord and having folks actually say like, oh, that's amazing. Like, how did you get that? Et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, uh, adds, it adds excitement to it, as well as getting to know all these folks from all over the world has been, been really exciting too. Yeah, Prince Namor says it's cutthroat. <laughs> 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 it's usually cutthroat first and then after you decide you don't want to buy it then you're then you're the uh you know a little more magnanimous and willing to share with with your other friends i mean that's kind of you know if you have a if you're if your friend group is all x-men collectors you're going to you know be aggressive first and then be willing to share when you decide to pass up on it or something i know we all know how that goes but that's that's okay um i, I saw mikhail asked earlier if you were still uh 
friends or you know with the uh the, the person who was uh i don't want to call him your mentor but the person that you who you met early on who had the original art yeah yeah actually um we 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 keep in touch um interestingly his daughter so he's he's maybe 15 years older than than me um his daughter is really into tilly walden whom i represent and I was able to get them some signed and sketched books uh, of hers last time I, I was uh, I got to hang out with her. Um, so we do we do keep in contact. Um, and he's one of those folks where um, you can just sit and listen for two hours about, you know, all of all of this knowledge. I, I really um, love keeping and I say mentor, I mean mentor, like I love having folks around me that this may not be the right way to put it. But kind of make me feel dumb, like I don't know anything about collecting or whatever, because I just love absorbing all that history. Yeah. You know, I, I keep telling folks that I wish I wish someone would make like a documentary about coll collecting and, and art, art collecting and comics, because, you know, I, I feel like there's such interesting stories that some some folks are more willing than others to share. But I don't want to lose that. You know, like I think there's such a fascinating history with the folks that are kind of um, I don't know, behind the scenes who mm -hmm. who are in some ways, you know, supporting cartoonists by buying their art from them or kind of supporting the the, the economy within comics in, in a different way. And uh, I'd love to capture some more of those stories. Like I got really addicted to, to Felix's podcast. It's a, mm -hmm. a, a, a big reason why I started, why I had the confidence to become an art rep because he was sharing those stories. And, you know, I think a lot of us are also really fascinated with the hunt, right? The the sort of like finding that thing that may, we don't know if it exists or not, or, um, you know, find being the first person to to find this this obscure artist or, or you know, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And and sort of the 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 detective work that goes into collecting is is really addictive as well, you know. Anyway, that's a long, long way of answering that, that question. No, no, yes. well, I'm totally into that too. I mean, I think that, uh, trust me, I've tried to interview our uh, many of the old timers. <laughs> they don't like to be called that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, but a lot of them turn me down. They don't want to have any time on camera or anything. But those are the people who I'd love to interview more than anybody because of their time in the hobby. You know, there's 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 art reps who've been out there for 40 years, you know, or, or a little more. Uh, who or, or or were or were doing uh, art rep work back in like the late uh, mid to late seventies and early eighties, and uh, who aren't doing it anymore. I, and I've made inquiries with a lot of those people, and many of them don't even reply <laughs> to my inquiry. You know, because they probably don't think anything of it. But for me, it's like I, you know, I came in after that fact. I mean, I didn't start collecting until like ninety eight, right? So yeah, people who were selling art in the eighties. I'd love to talk to them just to get uh, their perspective, you know, which artists they were working with, uh, you know, give us a, give us a sense of what the collector base was like at that time. Uh, but yeah, by and large, most of those, those people who uh, were selling back then don't want to talk, uh, you know, it's, and it's unfortunate, you know, I mean, I, the only person I ever met that I've been able to like have a lengthy conversation with was the guy who owned uh, the New York comic arts gallery from like 70, I think it was 72 to 76, somewhere around in there. So we made a little, I actually made it into a documentary because I thought it was really just a great story. But that's the only real insight that I've been able to get recorded, uh, you mm -hmm. know, of an early person who was trying to make, uh, you know, something out of the the hobby that we enjoy today. So I'm going to keep trying. I ask, I ask uh, let's see, what is it? Once a year, I, I ask Mitch Ikowitz if he'll do Mitch. an interview with yeah. me. And he's been turning me down the last five years every time I ask. But one day he will uh, he will hopefully say yes. I mean, and that that'll that's the day when the you know the the uh, I don't know when when the lightning uh, you know, <laughs> ripped apart most of the United States. But I'm going to keep trying because he's a guy who he actually came up in the conversation about that one gallery in uh, in New York. You know, it, where they mentioned he he had long hair. I mean, he's you know. He's had short hair. He's been practically bald since I've known him. But the other guy's <laughs> like, oh, yeah, this guy named Mitch, he, he'd always come by and, you know, he'd buy stuff, talk to me about comic art. And I'm like, do you mean Mitch Itkowitz? And he's yeah. like, yeah. I'm like, doggone it, I got to get this guy on camera sometime because, you know, he's uh, he's been around. But uh, so far, no luck. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know, maybe it's generational. I, I um, you know, 
I feel like the folks that I that I mostly work with and 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 kind of uh, sell to are are much more kind of open, I think, than mm -hmm. than maybe previous folks. It, it, it we we keep bringing up this this idea of being cutthroat, and that that actually hasn't been my experience. I mean, a bit of like, I found this sale first. I bought my stuff. Here it is, right? But mm -hmm. but honestly, like the 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 one Jaime Hernandez page I have. The only reason I have it was because one of the collectors I've worked with for a while um, <laughs> basically was uh, said, "I know you 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 probably weren't going to be able to afford a page. Um, here's 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 my like scrapes. <laughs> Here, here's here's my leftovers." <laughs> and I was more than happy to to do that, you know. And I think, um, and maybe I'm a little bit idealistic, but there's always more art to be collected. And for me, sometimes you make those compromises to, to help, you know, maintain a positive relationship with somebody like, Hey, I know this person collects this stuff. Um, I found this page. Do you want it? Right? right. And I think, I think that happens a lot and maybe we don't focus as much on it. We we're more interested in the, the sort of drama that happens sometimes. But I think a lot of the hobby is folks supporting each other and 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 kind of helping each other out, you know. But that maybe that's just my perspective. Well, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of fun watching one of your friends spend money on something. And <laughs> that's it's vicariously <laughs> living for them. Yeah, I have. Uh, I could say I've experienced that joy every now and again when I've, I'm like, I'm not going to buy that thousand dollar page, but I, I know my friend probably will because <laughs> at the end of the, you know, I, hey, we all have our motivations, but. Uh, but it is kind of part of the fun. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Uh, sorry, I was reading through the chat. But, sure. uh, but yeah, you know, the thing is I picked up uh, something, you know, a, a really cool page. I, I want to I want to show it off, but I can't. I have to wait till I get it in hand. But uh, but it's fun when you find something that um, you thought you'd never have the opportunity to own. And it's just there in front of you. And you're like, you know, it's. You, you, you just you just want to you, you got to own it right i mean it's uh, it, that was what what happened to me this weekend where i just was like this is one of those opportunities that doesn't happen too often you know you can get a jaime hernandez page you know they're they're out there you might yeah. spend a lot you could spend up you know four or five thousand for a really good love and rockets page or maybe get an average one here or there but um but there's there's pages out there from uh you know from a lot of books that are that are just uh uh you know hard to come by you know, you don't see them too often, whether it's a particular series or something or whatever. And um, and I, I like those moments because they don't for me, they don't happen too often. I think I feel like I've gotten I haven't I don't own everything that I want. I have, I have a lot of gaps with uh, creators that I've been you know wanting to get a piece from for my collection. Like I've never had a Lee Elias page. I don't oh, I, I just want to get love, one. I love. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I love his work. And I've just never found the right page or I've always been late. You know, I've been the second person yeah. to inquire about it during Comic Art Live. So, um, yeah, so like, yeah, there's, so there's gaps, but I don't, I don't run into those, oh, wow moments too often. And, and that's what I, uh, that's what I had this weekend. So probably, you know, I can't wait to show it off because it's actually something that would be right up your alley. It's a very, in, uh, uh, independent book that, uh, I've, I've, that I, I discovered late in life. Mm -hmm. It's really since I've been doing these live streams, I always knew about it, never read it. And then after I read it, I was like, wow, this is something I got to own a page from. So, uh, so I've checked that box off. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. I've learned the hard way. I mean, and everyone has, right? The the sort of you have to act. Um, I've learned it both in in the the sense of you know pages that that everybody wants, uh, but also in the okay that page has been here a long time. It's gonna be here. I know it's gonna be here in a week from now. <laughs> um, I several times I've finally gotten the cash to buy something. There's a, a Jeff Lemire, one of my my favorite. Uh, uh, artists yeah, I love Jeff work. Yeah. Um, and there was a, a really beautiful illustration he did of a, a Batman and Robin piece. And I finally, I spent two years saving and, and I was ready to buy it. And it was sold uh, like earlier that day. Like I clicked on it to, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and the rep was like, I'm sorry, it was sold. And I, I just, you know, uh, you, you, you got to act if you want something and you have to be okay with it being gone for forever. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, it, sometimes I have to be okay with like, you know, I've always wanted a Neil Adams Green Lantern page and probably not going to get it. <laughs> I'm going to have to wait till it could uh, happen. It could happen. It could certainly it could happen. Um, my kids will have to be through college before that before that's an option. You know? <laughs> 
Well, or that PhD starts paying off for you. <laughs> yeah, any day now. Any day now. <laughs> any day now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get it. I totally get get that. Um, yeah, the only other uh, independent artist I've ever picked up anything from was Durf. I always loved, uh, nice, yeah. you know, he, his, he, uh, he always had a, uh, a strip in the local uh, scene magazine in Cleveland. And so I picked up one of his, uh, his, his strips from that and was, you know, and I met him at a small press, uh, you know, expo in Cleveland like 15 years ago. And I was just shocked to see his work because I, you know, grew up on it in, in the, uh, you know, the free scene magazine that came out every yeah. week that I'd pick up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and I love it. I've never, I would never get rid of it. You know, I just because I, I don't think I'll probably ever get it. Well, who knows? You can say never say never, but he's just somebody you don't see it at, at shows too often, right? I mean, it's popular and well known as he is for a lot of work he's done in the last ten years. He's just somebody that, at least in the places that I I frequent, he doesn't turn up yeah. too often. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a pretty re regular at um, uh, CXC in Columbus. Um, but more the the small press kind of spaces, and mm -hmm. you know, I think as he as he gets older, he's less he's going to less shows. He doesn't need to anymore, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, he's he's a really interesting guy. I think I think he'll never sell a page from my friend is Dahmer. Um, he has sold some of like preliminary pages from that, but like his he just won't. It's just too close to him, and the the subject matter is 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 right. too intense. I always find that really interesting what what artists are willing to sell and what they keep, especially those that that keep it for forever. And I'm Durf is someone if he says he's going to keep it for forever, that's that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I mean, I've uh, having now been able to talk with with several artists over the last couple of years. You know that that usually comes up, and we talk about it not openly, but you know, usually in the green room before or after the show. And it it's always interesting to hear what stuff they they choose to keep. You know, and it, and it's usually for personal reasons, right? I mean, whether it's a story that they were really happy with, or uh, you know, or first uh, first time on a book, those kind of things. And I'm sure in you know. In a lot of ways, you know, they hear the stories of the older collect or older artists who, who basically sold everything. You know, you see John Beatty in the chat last night uh, talking about selling his cap pages for ten and twenty dollars back in the day. You know, and yeah. you know, you hear stuff like that. And I think as artists, you, you probably have to sit back and say, you know what? I think I got to I got to set some of these aside. I got to hold on to a few of them for later. Yeah, it's a real it's a real balancing act, I think. Um, you know, I talk to a lot of a lot of artists about this, and I I, I think that you know, especially that what we, we would call the old old timers would say you you want to keep your originals because that's your retirement, and I think that's true um, to a certain extent, but you don't always know what's going to stay popular, right? And so that's you know, true. I I some of the folks that come to work with, with me and it's more in the indie space, but you know, these, these people have bins and bins and bins of art everywhere. And is it going to hurt them to sell a few of those pages to help them pay the bills? Um, and they can keep a bulk of it, but you know, I, I, I never try and pressure anybody to, to sell something they're not comfortable with. I would never want someone to regret selling a page. I think it's much easier when you get a big check uh, from that page uh, to start letting things go. Um, but I, I, you know, I, we're Athenium is, is still fairly young. So we haven't seen that sort of like 10 years from now, a page gets sold for 10 times as much as we sold it for. Uh, I'm sure that that uh, uh, you, you, you have some feelings when you, you see that happen. Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's uh, the, you know, there's definitely more stories of the artist selling their work or you know early and regretting it than there are like Al Milgram, who's who's put all his um, or the majority of his stuff over with Heritage now, but he held on to it for all that time, which is amazing that uh, that he he did that. And uh, yeah, th those those stories don't happen too often for the old timers, but um, yeah, yeah, I we but we do hear that a lot, you know, the the, the regret from the artist. I mean, we you know, I Bob Layton on every week, and I'm sure if we asked him. <laughs> How he feels about having sold a two hundred dollar cover that's now selling for forty thousand dollars, you know, he probably would look very crossly at me if I asked him that question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I don't. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, um, I, at least, especially in the the world that I inhabit, um, you know, car cartoonists uh, artists aren't paid that much, and it's, I, you know, I think it's it's a struggle for me to see some of this. Um, 
some of these pages go for such insane money and the the artists not see any of that you know um so i, I don't know we talk a lot about in 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 my spaces about how how can comics become more sustainable for folks over mm -hmm. the long haul um you know why why aren't folks getting a living wage doing doing this um, and and part of why I wanted to sell art was to help folks get another source of income. Because really, selfishly, I want them to keep making the books that I love. You know, I think mm -hmm. we've all seen our some of our favorite cartoonists drop out of the business because you know illustration pays more, or you know now it's animation, right? Um, just trying to have a family. Um, and being creative is, is really difficult. And so, you know, I think for me, I get a lot of joy at being able to help these folks, even in very small ways, you know, be able to continue for that much longer because we sold some, some pages, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sure. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. So how, uh, you know, collecting for a while, how, how did yep. you evolve into deciding to even, you know, rep your first artist? Yeah. So um, interestingly, I really, like I said earlier, I got into Felix's podcast and listened to it. I, whenever I, I see it pop up, because it's, it's not as regular as it, as it once was, I, I like drop everything to, to listen to it. And I, I just really got excited about the ability to, to kind of like, again, give back to this community that I really, really um, enjoyed. And sort of long story short, um, there was uh, an artist that I was collecting from, uh, their name is Casey Nowak, and they were local to Ann Arbor, where I live now. And I moved to Ann Arbor, and we kind of started hanging out after I'd collected from, from them. And they had posted that um, they were planning on selling some of their art. And I said to, to Casey, hey, um, you know, I been thinking about doing this art rep thing uh would you be interested in me helping and I'll, I'll do it for free um i just want the experience and I, I expected casey to say no crazy person i don't know you that well i'm not gonna trust you with my art at all um but they said yes and um athenium which is named after my my daughter athena uh, was started as just like a Twitter handle back when Twitter was a place where you could actually do things. And um, kind of very surprisingly, we sold a ton of art really quickly. And I was pretty happy with just doing that. You know, I, I was I was nervous that I thought Casey, Casey was going to think that I was going to steal their work. So I had all of uh, payments go directly to Casey. <laughs> so I wasn't doing anything with the financial transactions. I would say, uh, this is how much it costs. Send it over to Casey. Casey will let me know when it's purchased, and then I I'll pack it and send it to you, right? Um, this was in the 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 old days, and um, so we were very successful. And to to my surprise, a few artists reached out to me to ask if I would also rep them. And I, I didn't have a website. It wasn't like an official business. Um, you know, I barely knew what I was doing at the time, but I, I think. I hit this sort of niche area in the independent kind of comic scene where uh, folks like myself as a collector, um, it was kind of a pain in the ass to, to get art from some of these folks because they're so busy, right? They have mm -hmm. full-time jobs. They, it's not that they don't want to sell their art. It's that they didn't have the capacity to do it. And so a lot of, a lot of um, my, you know, kind of collecting was like, I want to give you money. Here is money just send me a page. Right. Um, and so I think, you know, folks started to see uh, our success and they really liked the way that I curated, um, curated the, the art. I, I'm, I am really passionate about this. I, I, the folks that I rep, I love their art. Um, and so I think that shows in the way that I talk about it and the way that I, I, you know, do post on social media and, and whatnot. And so we started to grow and grow. Um, and the first kind of big artist was Tilly Tilly Walden, who um, is a is a young artist, but she's come out with uh, I think five or six graphic novels. Has won you know an Eisner, has won a bunch of awards. 
um, uh, and is very well known. And I had been collecting from her for a few years and we were pen pals. And when she joined, that was the point where I, I was like, oh, I need to <laughs> actually figure out how to do this. And I think, you know, anybody who's a, a small business owner kind of knows how unnecessarily complex everything is uh, mm -hmm. when you, especially when you want to do everything above board, right? It's always, I've always wanted to pay all my taxes, do everything. Um, and so I spent a lot of time outside of my full-time job and having two little kids um, at the time. And it was during the pandemic um, when we started and just kind of figured it out and just, you know, name after name person in the, in the indie scene uh, started to join and it, it, it blew up. Um, I think I was also really uh, lucky in that the, the folks that kind of randomly stumbled across the site, they would come for, you know, Nate Powell, or they would come for Tilly Walden or Noah Van Skyver, some of these folks who, who are bigger names in the, the indie scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess uh, Nate kind of transcends all things. But um, they would be really interested in some of the other art that was posted there as well, even if they hadn't read the books. Um, and they would start buying things just because they thought it was cool looking and they would read the books and then they would start, you know, um, kind of supporting Athenium in, in other ways. And I think I have a really wonderful, passionate community of folks that are invested in this little project as well who, you know, encourage me to get out into the world and talk about it um, and and dig this idea of the, this sort of narrative that I am helping to create around, hey, you can buy a pretty thing and it's really going to help somebody, right? Like I get all this feedback from the artists I work with. I was able to pay my rent this month. I was able to to fix the the boiler in my house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of joy that I that I get from from that and over the past couple of years we've been more successful than i ever could have dreamed if you had asked me you know five years ago if i i it, sean do you want to own a business i would have said absolutely not <laughs> right like i i am happy to to do uh you know what were you doing five years ago for for uh, revenue uh, uh, well, so, well, I, and I don't do Athenium full time, but, uh, I was working for a nonprofit. I was working for Johns Hopkins, um, okay. and, um, uh, doing okay. But, um, you know, I think maybe a lot of us can relate to the, the, the mo moment in the pandemic where kind of everything went south and I've always needed some creative outlet to kind of help me deal with existential dread perhaps <laughs> and you know for a while it was um i i was trying to slow down my art collecting by uh, i taught myself how to build picture frames save money that way too um and i thought i would build a picture frame for each new piece and that would slow me down it didn't didn't work um <laughs> i just got good at it i got I, I have good i can make good picture frames but um uh i just couldn't stop buying pay, new pages um, but, uh, so I took that energy, that creative energy and put it into Athenium and, and, you know, uh, my family's going on vacation next week for the first time in a very long time. And I'm taking Athenium work with me and it's not work, right? It doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, uh, it's, I get so much pleasure from, from doing it, um, that I would love to, to eventually do it full time, but, you know, uh, you got to pay the bills as well. And uh, it's a balance. Someday I'll be I'll be like Felix and be able to do this full time. <laughs> that would be the uh, that's the dream at the end of the day to be like Felix. But I mean, you're not the first person that uh, I think Felix has helped inspire, whether, you know, whether it's through his uh, podcasts and the things that he did uh, early on. I think they kind of set himself apart from a lot of the other reps at the time who were doing things. But uh, but, you know, there's there's so many artists out there that uh, can can benefit from 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 good representation so there i don't think that uh you know we're gonna there's any we you know we can certainly use a few more reps is i guess what i'm getting towards because you know at the end of the day we want the artists making art you know not worrying about managing their business or how they're going to fix their boiler <laughs> well gosh i um you know I, i'm one person i had mentioned to, to you bill i think before we got on that i i've hired a temp which is mm -hmm. a, a big step and um i getting to the point where i have uh, so many people asking to to get representation and folks that I don't want to turn away, but 
you know, I only have so much capacity. And so I may, I'm one of those reps that's like, yes, more reps, like do it. If you, if you, you know, are passionate and um, are a little crazy uh, and, and are willing to work for free a lot, <laughs> um, you know, something that, uh, you know, you want to, we, we need it. You know, that's the, the feedback I get from a lot of artists is um, they, they need help right? Like they can't, they can't do all of the things. And especially in the indie world, I think there's this, this sort of story about the, the sort of what I call the, the lone cartoonist, this, this person that, um, you know, staples their comics together before the show, right? Like every, they do every bit yeah. of it themselves. And there's this sort of mystique to it. And I, I, I can, you know, I think there's, a, that's a great story, but you're not going to be able to, to survive doing that in the long run. And so how can we um, support these folks both as like art reps, but I, I've thought of how can I connect folks with marketing people that can, can help them with social media? How can I uh, connect them with business people that, that can kind of, cause like not, not all cartoonists are uh, as business savvy as, as, as uh, others. Right. And so how, how can we get them some skills um, um, and some support that again, selfishly perpetuates the thing, that I love and I want to read more of, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. No, I mean, I think that uh, that's great. So what I assume you probably typically set up at the small press shows. Have you set up at any bigger shows? Uh, I, not yet. Uh, not the bigger shows. We've done some of the smaller shows. It's interesting um, that uh, in small press world, so like the SPXs, the the short runs, the mm -hmm. CXCs, the, the TCAFs, um, they almost don't know what to do with art reps um, because they're so um, artist focused. And I've, I've, you know, applied to some of the shows and I haven't gotten in because uh, I'm not an artist. And I've even tried to bring some of the Athenium artists with me and, you know, still have struggled. And I think it's just a, a different mentality, you know, going to mainstream shows like I, I lived in um, I worked in Baltimore for a long time and Baltimore Comic Con was my local show. It's not you know, it's it's you're going to see art reps, you're going to see art dealers. Uh, you don't really see that as much um, at small press shows. So I'm trying to kind of you know, weasel my way in. I also created the, the sh help create the show in, in Ann Arbor um, just so I could table as well. <laughs> I think uh, my, uh, my, my attitude is sort of sometimes like if I can't do it uh, for whatever reason, I'll just make it myself, you know, um, which get you, get you moving. There's nothing but... wrong with that. You know, if, if they're not uh, going to accept you at their shows, you just go out and start your own. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, you know, spend a year <laughs> working on building your, your own show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to do that right now. So yeah. I totally get the, uh, you know, the reasons for not wanting to do it. It's a whole <laughs> lot of work, but, um, but that's true. I mean, typically when you're going to a small press show, you're really, you know, by and large working or, or expecting to see the, uh, the book creators behind the tables, not, not an art rep setting up that's potentially, you know, ripping material that would, all, you know, easily be seen at a small press exhibit. So maybe it's just kind of that, that, that old, an old fashioned mentality about who should have space at small press. I mean, you know, because there's not a lot of those people out there. If you're the person, the, the rep, uh, you know, Scott Eater, for instance, you know, he, mm -hmm. he deals in a lot of that work, but he's never really, he's never repped any of those artists, but he kind of deals with a lot of independent artists himself. Um, but yeah, they'll just have to get used to the idea. You just you need to, you need some competition is what you need. You need one other one other person to go in there and sure. say you know that they, they want to do it. And maybe it'll start become standardized a, a bit at least where people expect it more. Yeah, and I would encourage folks uh, the the audience if you haven't attended a small press show, I I you know I, I wasn't you know I'm not old enough to have gone to like early comic conventions, but I. I I would guess that small press shows are more aligned with what it was like way back in the day where it's, it's very, very much focused on the artists um, and, and very sort of personable. Like it's mm -hmm. very easy to talk to, like, I, like we, we talk about Jaime, like Jaime Hernandez, he has a line, but like you could have a conversation with Jaime um, if you wanted to, you know um, and, and it just, it feels like a, a smaller community. And so, 
even if you aren't familiar with the the folks that are tabling there, just walking around, it's it's a it's a different vibe. I think there's there's benefits mm -hmm. to 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 Baltimore Comic Con. I love Baltimore Comic Con as well, but that's more of a celebration of, of both comics and and pop culture, right? Um, and uh, there's something there's something be there's a beauty to the to the the simplicity, I think, of the of the small press show. Um, and the, uh, someone asked what the, the name of the show was in Ann Arbor. It's, it's called A2 Calf. A2 what? A2 Calf. Calf, okay. Mm -hmm. Comics Art Festival, okay. Hmm. Never heard of it. Yeah, well, we How just, uh, well, that the small press, there's two versions. The small press version, that was the first year this past year. Um, there is a summer version that's more oriented to, to um, kids. That they've had for about 12 years now. So like uh, Raina Teglemeyer has been a headliner there. Uh, Nate Powell went there mm -hmm. in, in the past. So they get really big names in the, the YA um, kind of area. And it's a great, it's a, both the shows are really wonderful. They're, they're held at the, the library. The, the library is amazing. They treat artists incredibly well. There's no table fees. It's free to go to the show. This year we had, um, for the small press version, we had Jaime Hernandez, Jillian Tamaki, whose new book just came out with her with her cousin Mariko, um, and Rosemary Valero O'Connell, um, which were which were all, all amazing, amazing cartoonists. Um, and it was a really uh, well attended show. Um, my my goal is to, I'm, I'm I'm fairly lazy and I don't want to go travel all the t all over the place. So I want to like make Ann Arbor more of a, a, a sort of central place for, for comics. And um, it's exciting because, you know, the Billy Ireland in Columbus is not that far away. Um, sure. And those of you who don't know the, the Billy Ireland is a, is an amazing uh, original uh, comics art museum um, uh, and has, has spectacular art there. Um, and uh, you know, the, uh, you, um, Michigan State has, I think, one of the largest comics collections in the country, and so we're all within driving distance. And we're trying. We're, I think, we're we're going to do a better job of coordinating between all of these spaces to to really so celebrate comics in the in the Midwest, make it a destination. <laughs> no, it makes a lot of sense. The uh, you know, we went to the Billy Ireland as a group back in the August before last, and it, you know, it's it's amazing. It's a resource that I think every OA collector should go to at least one time. And uh, it's even better if you can, you know, get a big group to go because at that point, you know, they'll, they'll do more. You know, you get the be we got a big behind the scenes tour when we went there and they loved it because they don't have, they typically don't have people going there that, are, you know, that love the medium like we do. They'll, you know, you can go through, walk, walk through their galleries, but, you know, they took us through the back room. So, you know, pulled out all the flat files, showed us the, you know, three foot by four foot Hal Fosters and, and a stack and a, and a flat file in the middle of them, you know, a maze of flat files, that, that kind of thing. And uh, I would definitely, you know, now that I'm not there, I mean, shoot, you know, if, if you could ever arrange a trip there, it's definitely, you know, where you can get, get a couple other collectors to go with you. They, they'll, they'll bend over backwards to make sure you're, you're happy. You, you know, cause you'd already give them a list of things that you want to see and they'll pull them out and set them out in that library, or, you know, that they have. And it's, it's just an amazing, amazing resource that, uh, uh, not enough people in the hobby know about. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I love those experiences. I, I was lucky enough to go to the Library of Congress to see um, the original art to Amazing Fantasy 15, and it was like a, a religious experience for me. Like I feel like I, I may have started crying during it just to, to see those pages, and to, 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 to kind of see your like childhood, like right, like this is, this is. Um, the beginning of something really special. And so I always encourage folks, if you're able to go to uh, one of the museums that holds original art, it's such a special experience, especially when you can get that special tour. Um, uh, with Amazing Fantasy 15, they'll, obviously they'll, they'll sit with you <laughs> and turn the pages for you, but they'll talk to you about all the stories, um, uh, you know, uh, and, and sort of the the behind the scenes that were happening within those pages that are really fascinating. So it's a, it's a, it's worth doing if you can. Yeah, no, very, very true. I, uh, I'd love to get back there again sometime if I ever uh, make it to Columbus, I have relatives there. So I actually have a reason to go to Columbus <laughs> if I really wanted to. Uh, but, uh, but you know, the, the only downside to the Billy Ireland is it's only open Monday through Friday. So it's one of those things that if you're actually, there for a trip or whatever 
Saturday, Sunday doesn't work. You have to go there during the week and pretty much like the nine to five or you're, you, they're just, they're closed. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think you gotta be a crazy person like, uh, like a lot of us and be dedicated and take that extra day off <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to, to go to it. It's honestly, it, you know, for me, uh, of a certain generation, seeing Calvin and Hobbes pages is mind blowing and how beautiful they are, like how pristine, uh, they look in real life. It's just, it's just kind of life changing. So, and you know, some of that art you can only see there. It's the only place that you can see those pages. Mm -hmm. So, um, make the time if you can. There you go. So, uh, maybe we should start looking at some art. Sure. Think, uh, that might be fun. Everybody thinks I'm ignoring them in the chat, but I'm just, cause you're not talking, you guys are talking about my, uh, my Zevia and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I am ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to, I, I'm not going to acknowledge your, your presence when you're doing that, but, uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's look at some art, but yeah, the thing I've always wanted to get to, to see the amazing fantasy 15. That's uh, when I went to Baltimore two years ago, I tried to figure out how to swing over there and I, I couldn't make it. But um, but definitely at some point, you know, that's something that I would love to see because, yeah, that's that is a bit of a bit of comics history right there. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to know who who donated that. Those those pages. I don't, they won't I, tell I don't, you. They won't tell you. <laughs> no. they, they know they know who did it, but they, they won't tell us. So oh, someday. Yeah. Yep. Well, there's, uh, you know, the thing is that, you know, that art was never seen for a long time uh, until it was donated. And there are a number of issues from from that period, you know, that are still out there somewhere that have never surfaced, you know, whether it's from early, you know, a couple early Avengers. Uh, you know, there are just complete books that are out there that no one's seen. So, they, but they, they'll have to surface some point when I don't know, but it was kind of cool how that all worked out. Yeah. Yeah, that's the exciting part about this hobby. You never know what's going to show up tomorrow. <laughs> that's true. That is very true. Um, all right. So, yeah, let's uh, let's dive into this. So we've got, I think, 19 pieces of artwork to look at today. And uh, and I kept them in the in alphabetical order that you sent oh, cool. them. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so I don't know how much you want me to, to kind of dive into. No, I mean, well, Anna Redman. I, I'm not familiar with the artist. Yeah, Anna Redmond's a, a, a kind of new to her career cartoonist in um, in the UK, and she is doing some amazing books right now. And the reason why I wanted to share this piece was obviously we've talked about Green Lantern a lot, um, but this was actually gifted to me by one of my my other cartoonists, uh, Caroline Cash, as kind of a thank you for repping her and. and hosting her when she was in Ann Arbor uh, for A2CAF. And uh, I don't know if folks can see, but all of the books that are floating around um, Kyle uh, are, are books from artists that I represent. Um, so it's just a piece that that kind of, um, you know, I get I get emotional sometimes over original art because I'm silly. And uh, this this piece in particular was really it's really meaningful to me that somebody would uh, spend the time to to put this together. Um, so, yeah, I really I really love Anna is uh, it's really great. I highly recommend t checking out her her books if you get a chance. No, that's really cool that she uh, she did that for you. Yeah. Yeah, and he's wearing an Athenium shirt. You can see. I didn't even notice that. Until... <laughs> There's like so much detail. It's like I just love. I love how above and beyond. You know, like you get a commission, and, and uh, it's. Uh, oh God, the fridge. It's been. <laughs> I I, I, uh, I was at Short Run in Seattle uh, a couple weekends ago, and uh, a, a waitress uh, saw my Green Lantern ring. And was a showed me her like her like DC tattoos and stuff, and we got into talking, and and she asked me who my favorite Green Lantern was, and I said Kyle, and the first thing she said was uh, fridging is is what uh, she thinks of uh, when when Kyle comes up, and I I say we try and forget that part of of, of history. <laughs> I see now. I don't know anything about uh, that era of well, because I don't so, know much about DC. 
Um, just very briefly, uh, the there was a scene in, in that run early on in the run or Kyle's girlfriend is um, her whole kind of point of, of her whole character's point was to just die as a plot, as a plot point, as part of that story. And so her, she was killed by one of the, the villains and shoved into a fridge. And so um, there was all this controversy over the way they, they cropped the image. Uh, and it looked like she, this, this woman was dismembered in the, this fridge and they this this term fridging kind of came out of it as as the 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 sort of um uh ways in which uh women were were sort of used uh we'll just say negatively uh in the 90s in comics and and sort of not not central to stories they were just these plot points that were easily kind of killed off for for without without reason you know um mm -hmm. so yeah, that's not my favorite part of Green Lantern lore, but um, you know, it's it's what people want to talk about. Sure. Well, it's a, the chat frequently mentions things that we don't want to talk about. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, but, uh, that's that's interesting. I actually think I did hear about that. Not you know, after you were mentioning it, I, I remember reading something somewhere about it. So I, I have heard of it. I had no idea it was related to Green Lantern, though. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah uh well let's see here but again that's cool a gift i mean that's something you're going to keep for the rest of your life let's oh, go yeah. that's going to get passed on down to the kids yeah may get buried with me we'll see <laughs> <laughs> uh caroline cash Another caroline thing. cash yeah so she's a up-and-coming cartoonist uh, with someone that i rep uh someone asked who who wrote the the pp poo poo series that's a series yes. of, of books that she has put out recently it's funny every I always make fun of her because she she makes people say that out loud all of the time. She's won awards for pee pee poo poo, and it's it's just the most silly thing to say. But tabling next to her at shows, every everybody stops and buys that comic purely because of the title. Um, so it's it's working. It's working for her. She has a a, a book deal with Drawn Quarterly now. Okay. Um, wow. Book's not going to come out for a few years, but I'm really excited for for her. I think she's incredibly talented, and um, uh, she's going to do amazing work. This page I bought. I, I try not to buy pages from folks that I rep, um, uh, but I can buy buy them before I rep them. <laughs> buy pages from them, and so this was a page from I believe the first. Uh, uh, pee pee poo poo issue. God, I'm going to say that a thousand times. And I just adore um, her inking on this page. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of detail in it, but you you don't get overwhelmed by it. And I, I think it's it's really seeing her level up. You know, uh, on on the page, she's grown tremendously from her first. Her first book was called Girl in the World. And just to see the the sort of the skill and craft um, growing in such a short period of time is is really a joy. Um, and and she's also one of the nicest people on earth. Um, so I have a lot of kind of positive feelings about Caroline. And um, yeah, I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. <laughs> Alberto says you could uh, <laughs> fire them <laughs> or ask them to fire you. Yeah, so that's one way to, to approach it, Alberto. But uh, see, now I'm intrigued. I got to figure out where I can get a copy of Pee Pee Poo Poo and, uh, and, and, and have it right in my hand for the show, uh, for everybody in the chat one day. Uh, it's uh, uh, Silver Sprocket uh, publishes it. It's a, a, a small press um, publisher, and they have a store in San Francisco. They're doing amazing books. Uh, another high, highly recommend if you get a chance. Just go to their website. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure for folks in the in the chat, uh, there's probably a lot of stuff that you haven't seen before. But um, there's there's some great young young cartoonists uh, kind of pushing the medium into to new ways. So it's it's fun stuff. Well, I've written it down. I'm gonna I'm gonna look after the show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I really did like that page too. I thought the uh, you know it's just really well done. I like the the inking technique throughout it. I mean, I love the way she did the uh, you know the, the the panel board you know on the on the one side versus the lighting underneath. Yeah, the, the, over the, the bar. I mean, she's beautiful. She, she's doing a lot of really interesting stuff there that uh, is you know pretty advanced. I think. Yeah, and you know, I work with a lot of a lot of young folks. Uh, Caroline is is twenty seven um, and is really really uh, doing pretty well for someone like myself that uh, 
you know, as a kid, I wanted to be a, a comic book artist and did not have the skills to do it. I'm always uh, really impressed with people that, that can and make it make it look easy, you know. Here, um, Mikhail wants to know, uh, are there any indie artists that you were surprised to find work digitally? Um, I don't know if surprised, I mean, saddened that they work dig digitally. Um, I, I think, uh, not that I have the most discerning eye, but you can kind of tell um, art that's mm -hmm. that's digital. Uh, it's it's fairly rare where I, I get um, tricked, not tricked, but sort of like, oh, wow, I didn't know that that was digital. One of the artists I work with, Rosemary Valero O'Connell, she did a book called uh, um, Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me uh, that won a bunch of awards a few years ago with Marika, Mar uh, Mariko Tamaki. Um, she works primarily digitally, uh, but does the pencils, uh, prelim pencils. So we sell those pages. We were uh, lucky enough to get the library to pay for her to make a comic specifically for a 2 calf for our show. And uh, part of the deal was I encourage Rosemary to do it all traditionally. So it's the first book that she's done since college um, that uh, is traditional and we get to sell those pages and it's, it's really special. Um, but uh, someone like, um, Nicole Gu, I also work with. Uh, she's mostly digital, and that makes me sad because her her work is so so beautiful. She did a, for a more mainstream book. Uh, she did a book called uh, Shadow of the Bat Girl a few years ago. That's hmm. that's uh, pretty. I, I think really really great. More for the YA kind of realm, but but yeah. a good good book. <laughs> he didn't say F U calf. He said uh, what was it? Two no no a, a, a two calf Ann Arbor. Yeah, that's right. Comics art festival <laughs> there you go jason he did not say that uh never never and there, there are no x-men or captain america artworks on his website either I, I i didn't search for it but i didn't expect to find any i do have a uh no it's not up yet but uh, i'm really excited because nate powell gave me a variant cover from the black hammer justice league crossover and it's one of the first uh like legit uh superhero pages that we'll have up um, and so it's, it's pretty funny, uh, cause it, it's, it's different than some of the other art that we have up there, but I, I'm all, you know, uh, uh, I love all comic book art. It just so happens I work with mostly indie folks. Mm -hmm. See, now I expected to see like stacks of art behind you. I don't, I, you have a very, rather clean, oh, it's all, ah, okay. My, my father-in-law built the me. flat file. Uh, also I cleaned before before this you, you can't and you can't see the the art that's like on my floor right now so right well <laughs> you can't see what's yeah. on me either yeah the you can pie, see some piles i like stuff. to stand at my desk a lot so that people can't see the mess yeah yeah it's, a, it's kind of embarrassing but you know it's uh uh i only have so much space and the art built you know piles up really mm -hmm. quickly really really quickly so all right, well, let's take a look at uh, another piece of art here from uh, Dave Chisholm. So Dave uh, is a really great artist. Um, he does a lot of books related to, to music. He did a, a Johnny Parker book recently. Uh, his big book that just came out um, was a, a, a biography of Miles Davis. Um, this is from an earlier uh, sci-fi book he, he put together called Canopus. And uh, I just really love the, the action in this page. Um, Dave is one of these artists that I think really um, is, is super creative in how he approaches pages. Um, uh, this isn't the best example, but he'll, he'll kind of, he's one of the most amazing artists in terms of being able to represent music in a visual way. Uh, I highly recommend checking out um, one of his, is the biographies that he's done um, because he he just you can tell that he's a not only a, an artist but a, a student of comics as well and I I really love the folks that are try to try to do something that only comics can do you know like really uh, s s things that 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 film and and books novels books whatever don't that, that just can't quite do in the same way that you can visually um, through through comics. Um, so it was it was just a, a a pleasure to to get this page from him and to to support his his craft. No, it's really nice. I like his style. And this is somebody who you don't rep. Don't rep. No, no. 
a lot of a lot of the folks I have tonight I don't rep. <laughs> uh, cool. Let's see. Then we've uh, got Hyena Hell. Yeah. So Hyena Hell. Uh, not. I, I think that's her her pen name. Yeah. So um, I, I assume but, that. But I was I was I had to double check. I'm like, did did, did Sean write this down I, wrong? I, or no, no, I I wrote it down right. Uh, <laughs> Hyena. Um, she does this this sort of the series. Uh, that's kind of a comedy uh, around these demons um, who uh, just go through some hijinks, uh, and it's 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 a fun fun series, um, playful. Um, but this this was a page I think just from kind of her autobiography autobiographies that she was posting on social media, and it's another another page that a I really. Um, uh, connected to this, this sort of, uh, this little like gremlin thing that, that keeps you up at night, right. Where you, uh, are constantly, uh, connected. And, um, uh, so I love sort of what this was about, but also I think the, the, the craft here is pretty, pretty spectacular too. Um, uh, she's really good with, with figures, uh, as well as, um, uh, emoting, uh, with, on her, her characters. So it was just a fun, a fun page. I thought folks would like to see. Yeah, no, I actually, I, I definitely like her, the style and the piece very, very, uh, I don't know. It's, it's very, it's a very weighty style of, of her inking, but I, but I like it. I love the uh, panel structure too. You know, just those wiggly lines, you know, it's not, not squared off corners. She's right. just really, uh, she's very visceral. In her approach to her art, I think it's great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's see here now, but I assume in, in most cases with with these purchases, I, you know, maybe turn this off. So these are ones that you picked up direct from the artist at a small press expo, or do you, do you, do you order online for the, some of these artists that you haven't picked up? Like Hyena Hell, where did you buy uh, her art? Uh, she, uh, was raising money for, uh, I think, uh, you know, some, she has some health related issues and she was selling pages and, um, I, actually I bought that page. This happens quite a bit for me where I'll see like a deal that's like amazing. Like you can't, you can't not buy it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I buy the page and I, and I haven't really dove into the work yet. And that's when I kind of obsessively buy every every book related to that to that person, um, and so I actually think the mass the vast majority of the of my collection has come from, um, you know, connecting virtually with folks um, and starting up a conversation. I you know I've, I've picked up a handful of pages from from shows, um, but you know I. There was the pandemic. I have two little, you know, I have an eight and a five year old, so I don't make it out to. I'm starting to get back to shows with the business, but um, it's much harder for me to to kind of go to things uh, mm -hmm. these days. So mostly, kind of just like social media. Um, you know, Twitter for a long time was a, an amazing place to find new artists. Um, there was always someone. Um, you know, a cartoonist that you love would be championing a, a, a younger cartoonist, right? And I, I love finding, um, you know, fresh new voices on the, on the scene, uh, par partially uh, because uh, I can get a page before they're super famous. You know, I have a, a we'll talk about Zoe, Zoe Th Thorogood um, later on, who's kind of blown up. I bought a page from her very early on before she was repped for not very much money. And it's one, it's, I, I love that page. And mm -hmm. now it's, you know, they're selling for much, much more now. Um, yeah. But, but kind of getting them in that sweet spot before, uh, before they get tarnished by us uh, evil art reps is, uh, is helpful. <laughs> yeah. You are part of the problem, but it's okay. <laughs> it's, you know, it's uh, without it, we wouldn't have the opportunity to buy a lot of this artwork. You know, there, it's a give and take. I think that we have to uh, we have to wrestle with as art collectors. But right, you know, I'd rather have the art than not, even if it ends up costing a little bit more. But but I think that's uh, you know that's the thing that a lot of art collectors are you're on the hunt for that you know the next new thing that you can get before they blow up and you know just because the hobby is pretty expensive these days. You know, you it, it is what it is, but. Uh, but I think that people, there's a lot of people who enjoy the hunt, you know, looking for, looking for the next big thing. That's yeah. Cool. And it's kind of my job now. So mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So uh, you mentioned Jaime before, and now uh, we have uh, 
have a have a piece of art by them. Yeah. Is this the only piece you've ever owned by? It's the only page I have. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I think I, I there are still uh, affordable air quotes pages out there, um, but uh, you know, I have to be very selective with what I buy these days. And uh, I think uh, my my buddy Mark was in here making fun of me because I said it was earlier that it was uh, his his leftovers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, it's kind of true, Mark. But um, uh, I I decided to to jump on this page because you know uh, someone who's been really supportive of, of Athenium was willing to part with it, and it's just a, a beautiful page with the the two main characters from Love and Rockets. Um, I think it's. I, there are different sort of phases of Jaime's career, um, you know, sort of the, the early on, the, the sort of really um, uh, heavy, <laughs> Mark will buy it back. Of course you will, Mark. <laughs> uh, of course you will. Never enough Jaime pages in your collection. Um, I, I actually really dig the Jaime's uh, more sort of simple lines. Um, uh, the work he's been doing recently in the past few Love and Rockets where he's able to emote so much in in with so few lines it's just like like a like a genius right finding the the this, this just sort of like sweet spot of of being able to to make you feel something so powerfully in in such an efficient manner like really excites me um and i you know i think jaime is is a master in a lot of ways um, and this page just has a lot of kind of like the, the the goofiness of of these characters, the love between these characters. This is sort of a fantasy scene in this in this comic as well, which I, I dig. Um, and I know there's there's uh, like Phil Hester owns a page from this storyline as well. I feel like it's in you know we're we're all part of this like community that owns uh, some some pages from a specific story. But um, I just I just adore it, especially now that I've was able to hang out with Jaime in, in person. Um, it, it's uh, more more meaningful. I also wanted to grab it before um, b the art becomes so unobtainable <laughs> in terms of prices. Um, this was a, a, a very, uh, a, a, it was a good deal. Thank you, Mark, for, for selling it to me. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's back to the thing, you know, having uh, pals in the, in the hobby do, uh, do pay dividends sometimes down the road. I've been looking like for a page from Jaime for a long time. I just haven't. All the ones that I like cost more than I want to spend, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but yeah. I'll find one eventually. You know, Albert's always got a few floating around. Uh, Scott tends to have a few. There's always there's always pages around, but once they're out there, they're harder to pick up. Yeah, I really my my dream was to have him do the poster for A2 calf and buy mm -hmm. that from him directly and, sure. and that would be like the end like that would I could die happy but mm -hmm. he was uh he's getting married he's he's moving he was really busy and and couldn't take on that project so maybe maybe I'll uh, get that out of him at some point in the future. <laughs> uh let's see here. Let's look at uh, the next piece here. Jasper Jubinville. Jubinville. Yeah. Jasper is another one of those sort of uh, one wonderkins. Uh, he's 22. Uh, one of the, I, I think the, the scan doesn't do justice with how, A, this is a really small page. I don't know how someone inks like this. Uh, if I were to do that, it would just be a huge smudge. Um, uh, he is, I think, one of the most naturally talented cartoonists out there right now. Um, he's doing a book series called Dynamite Diva, uh, producing it all himself. There's, there's, there's there are these um, a few of these younger cartoonists that um, have really studied the history of 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 comics uh, and making comics. And they are out there kind of doing their own thing, building up their uh, portfolio so that they can, you know, get a, a book deal at the right point when they're ready to, to, to have a wider audience. Um, and so a lot of these folks have kind of grown up on that sort of social media, Instagram world where they, they post a lot of their work for free there first. And they get such a following that a ton of people want to buy those physical books when they put them out. And if you're producing them yourself, all that money goes to you, right? There's no middle mm -hmm. person. And so you can eke out like a decent existence by, by publishing yourself. It's a lot of work, 
um, and you have to kind of grind to to get that audience. Um, but Jasper, I think, is just a um, one of these folks who I'm so excited to see what he does with his career because if this is where he's at at 22, <laughs> you know, I think uh, um, I think he's going to do pretty well. Well, Dan, uh, Dan knows Jasper's work. Dan definitely knows his uh, independent artists. I know that he's yes. He he, he forced me to pick up a page when I was at uh, Heroes in uh, oh. in June. I haven't gotten it yet, by the way, Dan. Hopefully, I'll get it at OAX or sometime around then. That would be nice. But uh, I've been waiting. Um, <laughs> this is uh, this is nice, nice, nice work here by Jasper. If he's only twenty two, two, he's got a an interesting career ahead of him, like you said. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, Jillian Tamaki, some folks may be familiar with Jillian, um, uh, another award-winning cartoonist. Uh, this page means a lot to me. Um, way, back in the day, uh, I used to teach a, a graphic novel class, uh, and I um, helped build the curriculum for it. And one of the books that we had was This One Summer, which is a book by Jillian and her cousin Mariko. And, um, you know, it, it, I think it's it's categorized as YA, but I, I, I think that, that does a disservice to it. It's um, an amazing story about, um, to boil it down to really oversimplify, um, it's about two young people who uh, are growing apart, right? One One's a little bit older and is starting to see the world through a teenager's eyes. And her friend is a little bit younger and they're starting to, to drift apart. And that that younger kid um, doesn't quite understand what's happening and why things are changing. And I really related to that, those moments of change where perhaps, you know, someone that you've been really close to, you're not anymore. Um, and so I, I, I just really uh, love, love the story. Um, and long story short, Jillian has also gone on to write a lot of children's um, books, and my family has read them. We read them almost every every night. And to part of why I started Athenium was to help me afford pages. And when we were uh, fairly successful, um, I allowed myself. I don't often take money from Athenium; it gets reinvested. Um, I bought this this page. Um, this is one of those pages that I will keep for for forever. Um, uh, and, and hopefully my kids will be interested in it. Probably not, but maybe they'll, they'll want to <laughs> keep it in the family for a while. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everybody's asking about why aren't there words in the balloons? Is it because they were trying, it was translated. I'm, I'm guessing, but I could be wrong. No, I mean, it's not that unusual um, in in these spaces where they're done digitally or, or after after the fact. Um, so quite a bit of indie. Uh, I mean, I guess more of the I see it more in kind of YA books. I think it's a matter of speed. Right. You have to put a put a. Uh, a 300 page book together in a very short period of time. And it, it, even if you love lettering, if you're doing it all yourself, you know, I think like in, in mainstream comics, you have multiple people doing different things, penciling, mm -hmm. inking, lettering. If you're creating a 300 page book, you have to cut some corners. Um, and that may be why I don't know a hundred percent. Um, this page also, it doesn't, you can't really see it, but there's like, maybe you can a little bit, but there's a bunch of paste ups and I, I'm a big fan of process. I know not every collector is as into that, but I want to see the notes. I want to see the scribbles. I want to be able to hold it up to, uh, the, the light bulb to see what the original version was underneath. You know, um, I, I, I find that to be really, um, compelling to me. Um, I have some collectors that want everything to be pristine, you know, um, it's just a, you know, preference, personal preference, but, um, yeah. No, this is cool. Is there uh, uh, so this is two pages on one panel. Is that how they, uh, they did it? Yep. So it's two pages. Cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to see. It, uh, it seemed like she was kind of editing on the page a lot. There's, there's quite a, quite a few paste ups on it. Um, she's since moved to digital. And I think maybe that's that's why as well. Uh, it's uh, much more forgiving in the digital space to to change things, rather than having to, to kind of redo everything or paste that do paste ups and, and things mm -hmm. like that. So sure. 
that is uh, the way things are going. But uh, but yeah, I thought uh, you see a lot of European comic pages that uh, where the word balloons are empty, and you know that they're doing it that way because of you know translating it from you know, French to Spanish or whatever would be be a, be a waste of time right. to keep putting it in and lettering it. So, uh, but hey, uh, I think I I kind of kind of like the way it is with the word balloons like that. Uh, Sometimes they'll uh, I'll have collectors who will ask me if the artists can can letter um, it. Um, oh yeah, or, sure. And you know, teach their own. I, I think I'm a, a purist in the sense that um, I I want it the way it it was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I won't say who, but there are cartoonists who don't um, um, ink the blacks in uh, in the, the backgrounds because they'll do it digitally. And they will do that when they sell the pages. Right. Because that's sure. what it looks like in the published page. But they're they're not super interested in the original. The 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 goal is that published page. So. It can be messy. It can be cut up. It can be whatever. That's not what they want people to see. A lot mm -hmm. of the folks I work with, they never expected anyone. So like Till Tilly Walden will have these like really funny notes on the side, like, fuck, I can't think of a title for this, like just written on the side <laughs> of it. And I, I, you know, I, I just love, I love seeing that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's an interesting perspective. I, I think it's a, a little bit different in this, this sort of space of Photoshop and, and being able to fix things in post. Yeah, no, I get um, I've done four or five art sales with uh, Mike Oming. And a lot of times before he sends me the art that we're selling, he'll send me scans of them. And uh, and they're all, you know, well, not all, you know, the, all the blacks aren't put in and the scans he initially sends me, uh, you know, let me know what I'm getting. And then when I get them, I open them up and he's filled in all the blacks, yeah. you know. So but as part of the process to get the book out. Yeah. I mean, he he's a perfect example of somebody who does that exact same thing. It's just so much easier, you know, to worry about that later because he knows the collectors want it filled in. But for production, he doesn't he only worries about the characters. And if he can avoid filling in blacks, he'll he always does. So I I, I enjoy that because I, I, I remember the first time that happened, I'm like, you know what happened here you know and he's like oh, you know i know the collectors want it so I, when i'm going to sell something i'll fill it in before i send it to you yeah yeah i mean that that happens uh nate powell will, will fill in the blacks and there's so much ink that the page starts to bow it's like so there's so much it's so heavy um it's 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 really interesting anyway cool well let's uh let's see here uh jordan crane so Jordan Crane, uh, a cartoonist that's been around for quite a long time. Uh, this is from a book called Keeping Two. Uh, another one of those um, uh, amazing deals that I, I couldn't pass up. Um, I, I really love this book. Uh, there was an interesting, some controversy. The, the Comics Journal had a, um, a, a controversial review about, about this book that started a lot of um, conversations around criticism in comics. Um, and so that's that's a, a, an aside, but an interesting kind of rabbit hole that, uh, that you can jump down. But I um, really love this book. I, I love this page. Um, I really like scenes at, at night. Um, and I, I just every panel is kind of a joy to 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 look at. Um, and I also really like um, kind of what I call quiet pages. Um, even when I was collecting more mainstream stuff, uh, I, I'm really interested in like establishing shots. I like I like houses. I like architecture. Um, I like the the sort of angles on that, like the the light at the top is at an interesting angle to me. Um, yeah, it's just a just a page. Excuse me, just a page. I think is really interesting. No, it's really nice. I, I, I when I saw it, I, I I love six panel layouts anyway, so I I, I enjoyed it for that. But I thought the uh, I think it's really well done. I mean, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to own this page too. It's really nice. <laughs> I and I yeah, it's a good it's a good book. Check out keeping keeping two. Keeping two. Mm -hmm. Again, another artist I wasn't familiar with, but I just googled while the uh, uh, while we were looking at the artwork, and there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of interesting interviews out there with Jordan. Yeah, so. he's, a, he's an interesting guy. Um, let's see here. 
So this is Josh Pettinger, uh, an artist that, that I represent. Uh, again, this is a page I bought before I started representing him. He had an anthology series called Goiter um, that has about eight issues, I think. I could be wrong. Um, just a, a, a guy, a cartoonist that um, is another person who really loves the medium, really telling some interesting stories. I don't know if anyone's uh, familiar with Simon Hanselman. Um, Simon is a, is a, a, a fairly well-known cartoonist. Uh, he did a book called Crisis Zone during the pandemic that, that uh, kind of describes the pandemic uh, in interesting ways, but um, they have done a lot of work together. Um, uh, and yeah, he, he uh, <laughs> Pettinger uh, wrote a book, uh, did a comic called Power Wash as well. Um, this page kind of reminds me of a, a kind of Jaime Hernandez-esque. Um, I really love the, the sort of different uh, expressions on this woman's face. Um, and I just, I just thought it was a really clean, interesting page. Uh, Pettinger uh, is uh, interesting in that He's one of um, the few cartoonists I work with that that work on 11 by 17. Most of the indie folks that I work work with work on much smaller size paper. Um, and so he's one of the few that pencil and ink over top of the pencils. Um, and his work is is incredibly clean um, and it's just kind of a joy to to look at. So he's one of my one of my favorites. Well, there's a few uh, few folks in the chat who are familiar with Pettinger's work as well. Clyde Cleveland and uh, Dan T, of course. Mm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, let's see. Joshua Cutter. I know we have a few pages from Joshua. Yeah, so these are two connected pages. Um, they're from a book called Not Away. And uh, I actually hadn't read this until very recently. Um, there was uh, a little bit of a, uh, a thing that, that came up in social media where Josh, uh, so this is a book that was published through Fantagraphics and uh, it's on this, it, there's two volumes. They're pretty thick volumes. Uh, it's a sci-fi book. Um, and he talked about like the, the sales aren't there, the sales aren't there for me to continue making this book. So I'm going to leave Fantagraphics and just do it, um, myself. And, you know, this isn't, isn't him complaining. It's just sort of the realities of, of the, the marketplace being flooded. And it's difficult for, for cartoonists, um, to sometimes create the work that they want to. And so I was really fascinated by this whole story and I picked up the book and I fell in love with it. Um, I think it's it's one of the best fantasy series, uh, sci-fi, sci excuse me, sci-fi books that I've, comics that I've read ever, maybe. And it's this book that like, I never, I'd heard of it, but never picked it up. And I always love those sort of surprises to, to, to me, even if it's, you know, <laughs> I, I should have. I didn't it on the slide, by the way, everybody. It's Cutter. Cutter, yeah. Yes, uh, um, there we go. Uh, I, uh, even, you know, I often miss out on things when they're, when they're hot and I come to it much later. Um, but it's, it's always so much fun to find something that, that you think is, is just amazing. Um, um, and you feel like you're the only one, even though lots of people know it. Um, so I, I really love this page partially because, um, the, the interaction between these two characters, um, uh, you know, she's trying to get him to, to kind of relax. And I connect with my, my personal life. My spouse and I do yoga together to connect and, and relax. And there's something about um, uh, manipulating bodies in art that I really love. Um, so you see it in this page. And then the next page, there's sort of a parallel um, uh, parallelism between her, her sort of showing how to, how to do this, this move as well. Um, and you know she's a it's a it's a it's a it's a beautiful these are beautiful sequence so support not away it's a, a go pick it up um, from Fantagraphics uh, it, 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 Joshua is one of these folks who who's like I have ten volumes in mind for this <laughs> you know and I want this I want to read those ten volumes I was so sad when I finished volume two I love the style I mean uh, lots of detail. Love, uh, yeah, no, this is uh, very slick, yeah. Let's see, yeah, Jason. What did Jason just say that he pressed the like? Yeah, you should, everybody should. We don't have Nick Perucci in here to tell all of you to do that tonight. 
So this is a kind of upcoming cartoonist, someone I represent now, Kalik Kassir. Um, they are uh, a disabled cartoonist and the they've done a couple kind of books that they, uh, um, this book is called it, it Hurts Until It Doesn't. And it's about their experience with dealing with disability um, and and having uh, both both sort of struggling in terms of of not being in pain, but also having some some really difficult uh, experiences with her with with their family. And so um, this page uh, again, kind of the theme of tonight is is connecting to to my personal life. But I had back surgery when I was a kid, and um, uh, I still have the MRI um, images of it, and the, I just really kind of connected to the how sterile um, the experience of going to a doctor when you're you know in a lot of pain and don't don't know if that pain is going to go away, uh, if that makes sense. And I think I just love how uh, Khalil captures in in this page the sort of clinicalness of of medicine that's uh, it is very unique that is for sure and, and this and is again, all pencil this is pencil um as well which is always i'm, I'm like oh, i'm gonna smudge this you can see some of the smudges which were, <laughs> were which were printed in the um the uh this this small press uh diskettes which is local to ann arbor uh published the the this comic and they kept all of the smudges on the outside in the in the printed version which i think adds to the aesthetic of of what they were going for that's funny but you're right i mean it kind of kind of helps carry over what the artist's intent or not non-intent was was uh was meant for there so this is um, from Stone Fruit by Lee Lai. Uh, it came out a couple years ago. Uh, another book that I fell in, in love with, uh, was it Fantagraphics? I can't remember if they're, they're published in Fantagraphics. Uh, anyway, it was a book that, that uh, a lot of folks were excited about. I don't know if you've ever opened uh, a piece of art and you have to, it's like you, you have a double take because you're like, is this a print? The, the art is so pristine on this page um when i when i first opened it i was like did i did i get screwed over is this <laughs> there's it's like funny, nothing... when i saw this image honestly sean i thought it was digital yeah um, when yeah i was making it in photoshop the slide i thought i can't really tell here because the the you know you look at uh just like the shading on the pillow those are really wide brush strokes and those are things that i would expect potentially from somebody working digitally and it just it threw me but I just had to accept that it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, no, I. You can tell when you you have to like put the page about an inch from your face to see the the lines. But I, um, Lee Lee is a a cartoonist that um, at least at the time wasn't selling their art, and the only way they would sell their art was if you donated to um, donated to a cause of their, of their, actually, I think it was a, a cause that I wanted to donate to at the time. And so uh, I got this page because, you know, I, I donated to a charity in Lee's name, essentially. Um, and so, you know, I, I connect with, with that as well. But I, you know, I just love this, this very peaceful moment. The, the book has a lot of sort of, um, um, extreme emotions uh, at times between the two, uh, a couple of the, the the main characters, and this is a, um, a you know a young a young person that uh, is in their lives, and this is just a, a beautiful um, quiet moment. I think again, the sort of theme of, of quiet moments in my collection are, are really um, and really important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like this image a lot. Again. So I had to throw in uh, someone that that maybe people know uh, <laughs> on this uh, on this uh, 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 stream, but this is a Phil Hester page, and um, uh, it was from a book that I'm blanking on the name of. It's a Jeff Lemire uh, Phil Hester uh, joint. Um, uh, I can't remember right now, but it will come to me. Um, uh, a I Jeff Lemire is is or Lemire, however you want to pronounce it, um, 
is probably the reason why I jumped into reading uh, more indie books. I fell in love with Essex County, which was one of his first books. Um, and then Phil Hester, uh, I mean, you know, uh, back to, to, to green, green arrow for me, but, but also um, he, he, obviously he's a big um, original art collector and just a very generous person um, is, is often championing new cartoonists. It will spend, will answer any like silly, you know, message I send to him um, and has, has really supported Athenium um, over the past couple of years. So I, I just, when I knew that they were doing a book together, I had to have a page from it. And, um, you know, I, the, the use of, of blacks is sort of Phil Hester's thing. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I think this is just a, a lovely example of, of what he can do with, um, you know, negative space and, and, and kind of, um, you know, lighting things in interesting, interesting ways. So it's one of my favorite pages, family tree. Thank you. Family tree. Yeah, no problem. Well, I had to look at really, I had to zoom in on it to see what it <laughs> I know. I knew I was going to forget something tonight. <laughs> but no, this is, uh, we all love Phil. I mean, we love his art collection and we love his art too. So he's uh, he's somebody I, I keep saying I need to get him back on the channel to talk about it, his, his career in comics as well as, uh, you know, just we could do a weekly. Let him just pick 10 pieces from his collection to talk about and that would be fun. I'm going to, I, uh, I haven't told him this. I'm going to drive to him how, his house one of these days um, and get a, get a tour. Um, uh, he's not that, I was not that far from, from Michigan. I, I just can't even imagine going through those, those portfolios of, of just like the most amazing pieces you'll ever, ever uh, see. You know, I would love, there are a few collectors that I, I, I just want to go visit their collections. You know, I'll pay for you to let me do that. <laughs> you know, Phil is on that <laughs> list. Uh, I agree with you. <laughs> and uh oh yeah this is the i, I had to go re google it as well yes it is the one where the kid turns into a tree yeah yeah it's a really interesting book uh let's see sammy harkham sammy harkham if if there's anybody on this list that i think folks could should go out and and grab uh one of their books this book is called uh blood of the blood of the virgin um it's about it's it's a little bit complicated but it's about um, kind of these these characters who are producing a film um, in the a horror film in the 70s, I believe. And there's a lot of jumping around in time. Um, there's a lot of kind of diving into different characters, backstories. Um, Sammy's been um, uh, doing it for a long time. Uh, and I think this is sort of the, the pinnacle of, in my opinion, the pinnacle of his career. And um, I, I, this page was is really special to me in a lot of a lot of ways. Um, I, my, my spouse is Jewish, um, and therefore I have Jewish children. And um, you know, this this moment of uh, mother and child, um, you know, interacting during this obviously very um, difficult time uh, is is really moving to me, and also the the sort of interaction on the 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 sort of where the the, the kid is whispering to her, uh, their mom um it so reminds me of the playfulness of my own children and 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 kind of brings out that that sort of even in hardship there there are these special special moments um so i i i I had to jump on this this page, um, and I was I'm really happy to that it's in my collection. It's one of my favorite pages. They're all my favorites, but this one in particular. <laughs> that was very nice, and uh, uh, yeah, it, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a style that I can I'm definitely drawn to. It has like a uh, 20s you know strip art kind of feel to it, um, but yeah, I really really it's very appealing. Yeah. Uh, now I know we've got a, a couple pieces from Steve Arnold. I mean, they must be consecutive in some way, but, uh, tell me a bit about this. I, I, I love the uh, use of the, uh, the lettering as the uh, panel frame. So I, uh, the two pages that I sent to you are, it's, it's, it's an overlay. So the Perry shit life ah, is cut out. Interesting. Um, and so you can't see the full image under underneath. Mm -hmm. um, 
I guess the the shit shit life is is cut out. Um, Steve Steve Arnold is um, uh, up and coming cartoonist um, out of Philly. He's one of these folks. He cold sent me a comic. Um, the first comic that that he sent me was is called Perry uh, Midlife. And, uh, you know, I, I get people send me stuff all the time and of differing levels of quality. Right. Um, <laughs> and you never know what you're going to get. And you're like, oh, yeah, OK. All right. We'll, we'll open this up. And uh, it's it's about his experiences as a kind of in his mid 20s and how he just uh, uh, was was messing up a lot. And it's it's sort of a throwback to I think um, kind of like '80s um, alt uh, alt comics, you know. Like it reminds me of like Peter Bag, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, really sort of diving into um, both. There's a lot of realism in his comics, but also sort of fantastical things that you you never quite know what's real and what's sort of going on in his head. Um, and I I just think his craft and his storytelling it's really rare to see someone in the indie scene who's who's kind of you know up and coming who has both craft and experience or and the ability to tell a good story you know sometimes they have craft and the story is coming sometimes it's all about the story and the craft isn't quite there i just i think this that 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 steve is a is a, a rising star um and i his his this series is just one of those books that I'm so excited when a new issue comes out. Like it's, it's, I have piles and piles. I'm sure you, you can relate of, of things I haven't read yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, this is go, this goes on the top of the pile whenever it comes in. So um, yeah, if you go to the next page, you can see. So, the, but just before oh, I do, so the, uh, the, the, the Perry at the top and the panel at the bottom were done on an overlay that, yeah. So, and then okay. the 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 letters for for shit life are cut out. So are cut out of the overlay, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now yeah. that now it makes a lot of sense because I, I I couldn't figure it out, but now uh, but now now we can see why. Because there you go. Here's here's what it looks like underneath. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, I'm the only one that can see that image, right? <laughs> right. It's, it's not, that's, that's not what it looks like in the published page. Um, so it's another one of those, like, it's mine, you know, like, <laughs> uh, I have it. It's just, now uh, this I is the big reveal. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a little like my, my, uh, five-year-old was a big, big fan of this page. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a little juvenile in some ways, but, uh, you know, I think, when you read the book, you can see the depth at which, you know, it's both comedic, but also, you know, a lot of us were, were kind of lost at different times in our lives. And I think this captures that, that moment of, of kind of like trying to figure yourself out. And, and um, I don't know, there's, there's, I, I, I really connect with this, this work. Let's see. Yeah, no, I get it. It's really well drawn. And I, I, I think I had a few of those days back uh, when I was drawing. <laughs> um tyler boss on this page though this this thing is uh this is very very i i, I love the uh aesthetic and the and just the uh the storytelling on this i love the the approach to the camera work effectively on it uh, i you know tyler boss um i have a a, a good collector friend who's a huge tyler fan uh mm -hmm. buys a ton of his art and um you know i hadn't really dove into tyler's work that much um uh and i've i've since come to really appreciate it but uh my buddy had bought so much art he was like i can't buy all of it he, and he, he shared this page with me and i i a you know i grew up with the turtles um uh and and they are very meaningful to me but everything about this page a, it, now that i know tyler's work everything about this page screams tyler boss uh it's very i think it it, it kind of stands out um but um i i'm a big fan of subtle subtlety um and i love that you just you can see the turtles in that uh you know in that last panel and it's it's kind of there's so much to look at that you could miss them right and that's kind of the point right they're hiding um but the 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 over um uh the the looking down on the on the store uh, mm -hmm. panel i think is just you know it's like a video game right like it's just it's just such a neat way uh, another another one of those examples of 
what comics can do that other mediums can't, right? To play with these kind of extreme angles wouldn't necessarily work well um, elsewhere. And I, I, I just think he, he does a fabulous job here. Um, so it, I think it's a great example of Tyler's, Tyler's craft. Yeah, no, I love this page too. If you ever want to sell it, I don't know, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I'd be happy to take this because I I see that and I think of my days uh, as a dungeon master, you know, with the oh the, yeah, as well, you know, because it's got the grid pattern and everything. But yeah, the moment I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is a, this is a really cool page. Well, and it's one of those pages that like sat there for forever, and it was, it was a hundred bucks. It was a hundred yeah. bucks, you know. And I, I I just sometimes I even as an art rep, I'm always kind of surprised at what sure. people buy versus what they don't. Um, you know, like, of course, the big flashy pages go first. But, you know, I think as a as a um, as someone who loves the craft of, of ca cartooning, you know, I'm, I'm looking for pages like this that really excite me um, with with what they're trying to do, you know, so it was a good deal. <laughs> uh, for $100. Yes, you did yeah. incredibly well. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of good deals, so Zoe, Zoe, excuse me, Zoe Thorogood um, is kind of the, uh, another darling, I think, in the comic space now with uh, a few of her books coming out of, of Image. Um, this is from, oh, why am I going to blank on Billy? Uh, uh, it's uh, The Impending Blindness of Billy. Can't remember the last part, the, her name, but um, it's a book that came out of Avery Hill, which is um, a small press publishing um, uh, firm out of the UK. They were the first folks to publish Tilly Walden. They have a really good eye for up and coming talent. And um, before the book came out or right when the book came out, um, uh, she was selling some pages herself before she got with Cadence. And, um, you know, I was able to grab this, you know, I, I, I sometimes back in the day, I would put like the alerts on for um, uh, uh, <laughs> for for artists because I knew that they would occasionally do their own art drops. And that I just sure. happened to to be around when she um, uh, was offering to sell a page. And in interestingly, and I, I don't she probably wouldn't care that I, I tell the story, but, you know, everyone has had art. Um, packaged in different ways, um, and we'll we'll just say it's amazing that this page made it <laughs> from the UK <laughs> to the United <laughs> States in one one piece. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's on a like printer paper, so it's very very thin paper, um, and we'll see how long it it holds up. But um, I think it's a, a gorgeous um, example of of er early Zoe work, and it's on an eight and a half by eleven sheet um and just the detail on it is is like i don't know how she's not blind uh with how how small she was working um billy scott there we are billy scott um is the name of the book but uh yeah just an, another one of those i think uh, i got lucky uh pages <laughs> <laughs> no well definitely uh, i think uh i think there's several fans of zoe's work out there um, though, although I'm not sure how many pieces are on calf, uh, I'd have to go back and look. But uh, I'm not sure, they've I know that you know Cadence has had quite a few. Yeah. They've done done well, it seems. Um, and I, I, you know, Zoe gets me really excited because she has um, crossover appeal. And one of the things that that I am trying to do is to get some some mainstream collectors to check out some of these more indie folks. Um, and there are lots of Zoe's out there um, in the world. And, you know, I think it's worth exploring a little outside of your your comfort zone um, to check out check out some of these people. Yeah, there's actually 115 pages on calf. That's cool. Oh, I'm glad. Pretty good. <laughs> yep. No, I mean, more than I thought. I guess, I guess I've not done a search uh, for them in a while. So that's, uh, that's awesome. Huh, okay, cool. Sorry, I was like looking at a couple of the other pages that were in there. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, uh, no, well, and you know what? I I was looking at the show description and I noticed that I didn't put uh, your website link in there. So I'm throwing it in the chat right now and, and it, I'll add it in after the show because you can't edit show descriptions when they're active. Yeah. So I will put it in there afterwards. But I did I put in that. John's uh, website link in the chat. I would encourage everybody to go over there tonight and uh you know check out uh, some of the artists that sean reps too just so you can 
you know, get exposed to some uh, some new creators. I know that we have uh, several collectors in the in the chat that like to do that a lot. Mikhail is a, is a is a person who is always finding new talent out there. I'm always impressed by pieces he commissions and that, that ends up in his calf gallery. So, uh, you know, I think that this is a good opportunity for people to, to do just what you're, uh, what, you know, what you've been doing for a while, which is finding, you know, great stories from, uh, from new, new people that many, many of us would never even get the opportunity to, to learn about. I, I actually have never been to a small press show. I hate to say it. Ever. You lived in Ohio. They have great. I they know. I know. I trust, <laughs> you know, it, oh, the only one I went to, and it was really, but it was like at a bar. So you can't even, it's where I bought the Durf art. Um, mm -hmm. There was a, uh, I can't remember the name of the bar, but, uh, you know, and like, at, and like where the dance hall for the bar was, they had a, it, it was effectively a small press exhibit, but it was so small. There was literally, I don't even think there was a dozen exhibitors there, but Durf was there. Yeah, they're not all that tiny. Um, I, I would the the big ones that I would recommend um, also in in fun places to go visit in in general. But SPX in Bethesda, mm -hmm. Maryland, just outside of DC, that's an amazing show, really big show. Um, Short Run in Seattle, I just went to. That's that's a really really great show. And uh, if you want to go international, um, TCAF in Toronto is is probably my probably my favorite small press show. It's in um, this big library. It's on uh, three or four floors of this, mm -hmm. this gorgeous library. And uh, again, it's just an opportunity, um, I think, to, to see a lot of work that you wouldn't, wouldn't see anywhere else um, and, and really kind of support folks that are trying to do interesting things. And the, the vibe of those shows are, I think vi the vibes of, of most comic cons are really positive, but there's just a great energy um, around that sort of like do it yourself space. Um, so uh, I, I, I get a lot out of those shows. And um, if you can find a, a, a reason to, to bring a spouse to Toronto to <laughs> have good food um, as well as check out a show, it's a, it's a good, good reason. Cake Colin's is really mentioning, uh, yeah, the Mocha show in, in New York City. I, I've seen lots of photos from Mocha. I've never, never gotten there myself, but um, yeah, that's that's because uh, what wasn't Magnolia at that uh, not too long ago? I think I got a bunch of uh, photos from that cake in Chicago. Casper mm -hmm. mentions. I'm not familiar with that one. Cake Mice, is great. Uh, a lot Washington. of the shows are are just coming back after the pandemic, um, mm -hmm. and they're coming back with a vengeance. So. Um, uh, it's been, it's been really good to, to see them, these communities start to come back together in person. Cool. I just now have to find out if there's one in Orlando or anywhere down here in Florida. Now that I'm down here. I'm not sure. You should start, you should start one, start another one. <laughs> <laughs> right. You have, you have it, nothing it, but time, right? Exactly. Well, you know, maybe it can become a part of uh, what we're doing with OAX. Kezra and I have talked about the idea that, you know, it's not, we don't want it to be just about comic art, so we want it to be expansive. So there's no reason why it couldn't uh, incorporate small press into it at some point too. So um, when well, I, I I'm attending, I'm really excited. Um, yeah, I, I, I you know I meant to say that at the beginning. I, I appreciate you. You know you you've got a ticket early, and I'm so glad that uh, I'm going to get to meet you there. Yeah, yeah, I I'm I'm really impressed with what you're putting together, and any any opportunity to to chat about original art, uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna jump on, and there's so many people like like Felix I haven't met in real life yet, and mm -hmm. so I'm excited to connect with collectors and and reps, and you know I think for me I've um, I don't know it's kind of important for me to kind of uh, pave my own path at the very beginning, like I didn't want to like bug folks too much or mm -hmm. you know try and lean on people and and be like can you retweet my things, you know, and it, so it's been kind of more recently where I've started to, to kind of connect with some of the other reps. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I'm excited to have a, a, a reason to, to celebrate the community and um, hopefully check out some, some spectacular arts. I think it's going to be a great show. I'm really excited. Uh, it's all coming together. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to yeah, happen yeah. one way or another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the way we've been looking at it. But uh, the good thing for us is Comic Art Live's past us now because that was a lot of work just kind of prepping for that. Yeah. But now for the next uh, 70 days or whatever it is, we can just focus on OAX and uh, and tackle all the many things there. That you know, The thing is we're going to have like five or six galleries of art there as well. And that's 
to me that that's like the hardest thing to think about right now is how we're going to present the art because there's so many different ways you can you can rent or purchase your own mobile displays and things and you also want to make sure they're secure and oh, yeah. uh, you know and so we're, we're you know of course we've talked with security at the venue and those sorts of things but but the display stuff is like the big question mark it's like do you rent it do you buy it and because you know you're going to use it and you, you know it's it's there's a lot of things to wrestle with when you're when you're trying to be a show quite you know like what like we are because most shows don't have those types of problems right trying to think about how how could you have a a gallery with that might have painted artworks and frames you know in one of them and then another one that's going to be original comic art that we have to think about the best way to display it so there's a lot of uh there's there's, there's still a lot of question marks going into this it's but we're it's going to happen one way or another but uh but yeah i hate having question marks so we go oh yeah it, so. no i agree i and i've only done it at a small i mean we we did a show at this uh there's a bookstore in philly called partners and son and they're a, a indie comics shop mm -hmm. um but they're uh it's owned and run by a couple folks who um had a art of a, a, a fine arts gallery in um, new york city for a while and so they have a really good eye and we we did a, a, a gallery show and we decided that um, and it's kind of their style rather than framing it. it it's sort of um, they, they have these magnetic walls where they can kind of just hold the, oh, the sure, art onto yeah, itself. Yeah. And it's it's easier <laughs> and faster to do, but it, it, it kind of lends itself well to a certain aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, and I think the, the art that you all will have, I'm sure will be, you know, all, all sorts of different things. And you have to take a lot of that into consideration around the context of how you're displaying the art. Exactly. Um, so I don't, I'm not envious of, uh, of your, your task. That, and it's the, continuity too. Cause, uh, yeah. uh, Kazra definitely has an eye for style and, and, you know, and it's, and I, and I want that too, but it's like, you know, when you have continuity in anything, it's more costly and it, it definitely involves a lot more planning in order to, to pull something like that off. But that's what we want to do. At the end of the day, it's it's it, it won't be worth doing if we don't do it right. So, yeah. Well, yeah. and rem remember, like, it's, uh, it's great to do it right. And what folks will remember is seeing beautiful art and connecting mm -hmm. with, with people. I think, uh, uh, I, I mean, and I think partially because I've, I've planned many events in my in my life you know, we got to be a little forgiving that first year. <laughs> you know, the fact that it happens at all. I'm going to, I'm going to keep remembering, you know, reminding myself of that as we go into it, that, you know, I hope they'll forgive me for this or that. Yeah. You know, I know it's <laughs> no. going to be fun though. Like you said, I think the best part of the show is just going to be the fact that there's so many collectors in one space, you yeah. know, along with the artists that we like and the dealers and reps that we're so used to being able to see it, you know, maybe not all at the same show, but to have them all there at one time. Uh, yeah. I think the, <laughs> I think the networking opportunities that this show is going to, provider going to far outweigh whether or not I have the best, you know, wall space to hang our work on. But let's, it's uh, going to bother me until it happens. Let's just hope there's not a hurricane because like that, the end of like, that's all, all of the collectors, all of the art reps, all in one space. It's like uh, the president, <laughs> yeah. you don't want the I president. I create the event that the, the worst calamity in the hobby has to have happened. <laughs> no, I don't want to think about that. I'm worried that, you know, to me, it's like the worst thing that can happen is like, you know, the West coast has some crazy snowstorm, And so, you know, 25% of the people can't make it because they can't fly out or something like that. But uh, that, that, that to me was our biggest risk doing it when we're doing it. But at the end of the day, you know, I wanted it tied to CAF's anniversary, which is February yeah. 1st and keeping it around that time period and being in uh, warm temperatures in the winter. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Well, Sean, this was a lot of fun, man. Uh, yeah. I, I definitely appreciate the fact that we got to look at a lot of new artists that I wasn't familiar with. And I, there, there's a couple who um, who I'm not, I'm not going to say who that I, I did look at <laughs> the artwork available for them. Uh, and I was able to find some pieces. So I might actually pick up a couple things just because, uh, yeah, I like discovering new, you know, new artists as well, too. So this is cool. Well, and, um, and thank you for, for yeah. having me. And I'll just say before we, we leave, um, I love talking to collectors. And if anyone ever has a question or just wants to chat, like I, I probably spend as much time talking to people that don't buy art from me than I do from people that buy art. Uh, <laughs> it's truly, it's truly, you know, a passion project for me. And um, I want to connect and talk about things. And, and you know, I, I work really closely with the folks that, that do uh, collect from me. Um, and if there's any pages or, or artists that you're particularly interested in and you don't see something that you, you're interested in, just let me know. And always happy to, to take a closer look for you.
And, and right now in the show description, Sean's calf gallery is there as well. So you can easily reach out to him through there or through his uh, business website that I'll have linked in the uh, description after the show. So uh, uh, there you have it. That's uh that's that's cool. And, uh, you know, so thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This was this was fun. And, uh, you know, hopefully you'll you'll if you're going to OAX now, you know what Sean looks like. So you get to, you'll get you can say hi when you see him there. And uh, you, hopefully you wear that shirt because that, that's, that's, I wear it every day. So that's the identifier. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Bill, so much. I really appreciate uh, Not chatting a problem, with you. man. It was a lot of fun. And everybody, thank you again. And uh, you'll see me again tomorrow night on uh, that show we usually do every Wednesday. So I'll see you tomorrow night at nine.